Let's say that you're building a boot collection from scratch. Which types of boots should you buy first? In this video, we're gonna talk about the five best types of boots for guys. And if you're wondering why I'm not in my normal studio, that's because I'm here in New York City with my good friend and founder of the Stridewise YouTube channel, Nick English. Thanks for having me on, bro. I am extraordinarily passionate about boots. I earn an insane number of them, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy you gave me the opportunity to co-host today. For clarity's sake, I should specify, when we say five types of boots every guy should own, we're not saying, you know, you're not a guy if you don't own these boots or anything like that. We're saying like, if you're gonna have five pairs of boots, it's better to have the types of boots we're gonna be talking about today than to have like five pairs of the same kind of boot, right? So we're not talking about brands of boots or colors of boots, we're talking about types of boots. It, trust me, it'll make sense by the end of this video. Let's go to the first entry. First up, the number one boot every guy should own is a service boot. So basically a uh, service boot is your all purpose boot. The defining features of a good service boot, in my opinion anyway, they're about six inches in height. They're good year welted in construction, which means they're very water resistant and they're resolable. So they'll last you for years and years and years. Uh, full grain leather and they're lace up boots. So this is the way boots have been made for over a hundred years. And for many guys, that's the appeal of boots in general. You're wearing like rugged tradition on your feet. Popular service boots we've got here include the White's MP service boot and this one, the Viberg service boot, which for many is a grail item at about $700. But there are plenty of less expensive boots like Thursday Boots American-made Vanguard, which is uh, considered a service boot and currently costs $265. And it's made in America as well. Yeah, and also the Grant Stone Diesel, which a lot of people consider a great, more affordable alternative to Alden. Yeah, that's right. All right, so service boots, as you may have gathered from the name, are either modeled after or inspired by the boots soldiers wore during uh, the World Wars. So you might be wondering what the difference is between a service boot and a work boot or a heritage work boot, like the Red Wings Blacksmith or Iron Ranger boots. Initially, we had them as separate entries on this list, but many people consider them interchangeable, myself included, and many people work in service boots. So the difference philosophically is that heritage work boots are modeled after the boots that people used to work in, like coal mines or factories and so on, while service boots are modeled after boots people used to fight wars in. More practically speaking, the real difference between a heritage work boot, like the Red Wing Blacksmith, and a service boot is that service boots have a lower profile toe, like a sleeker toe box, uh, work boots generally have more volume. Again, many use the terms interchangeably. I consider the slightly slimmer service boot to be more versatile. So if you're picking between one or the other, I think go with the service boot. So the second boot that every guy should get is a good mock toe. So these boots are really hard to dress up, but you don't have to worry about them going with like jeans and a t-shirt. I think wearing a mock toe boot is a really good way to elevate a casual outfit. Mock toe is short for moccasin toe, by the way. It's modeled after traditional Native American footwear with a U-shaped stitching design around the toe box. Mock toe boots are more often than not made with a wedge sole like these, which is like a, a spongy white sole that's often made from crepe rubber, which is typically flat so that the heel can't catch on stuff when you're walking on a job site. Some people consider mock toes work boots as well, but for our purposes, they're clearly different to the other entries on this list. Yeah, a lot of guys see a mock toe as the best casual boot. Like I said, you can wear them with t-shirts. The sole is usually softer than other boots. And good examples of mock toes are the Red Wings, of course. Uh, these charcoal Red Wing mock toes were Nick's first pair of boots. Yeah, be careful with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Aura Legacy version of this boot is a favorite of Ryan Gosling and Drake. Yeah. Uh, many consider Red Wing as the best mock toe of all time, and there's a very, very strong argument for it. Right now, though, I think the most versatile mock toe on the market is Grant Stone's Brass Boot. It's just a tiny bit sleeker than Red Wing, and I think it can be dressed up more easily, while still able to be worn with a t-shirt. So it's a, it's a really, really good boot. Uh, yeah, and good mock toe boot as well. Grant Stone, Red Wing, you can't go wrong. The third boot every dude should own is a good Chelsea boot. Uh, this is a slip-on boot, so it's way quicker to get them on and off. They're super convenient. The design dates back to the early 1800s, hundreds as a riding boot and it was only the 20th century after the boot was popularized in England that people started calling it a Chelsea. A lot of people say the Beatles are the ones that popularized these boots. They were also called J Sparks Hall's patent elastic ankle boots for a little while and then the defining features are the elastic goring and the ankle length height. Like you won't find laced up Chelsea's and you won't find super tall Chelsea's either. Yeah Chelsea's are just simple they're versatile boots so what are some of the best examples of Chelsea boots? 
Well, the RM Williams Comfort Craftsman here is my favorite Chelsea boot. Uh, this is a boot that every single Australian in the entire world owns. It's like basically mandated by the government. Everyone has to have a pair of RM Williams. You get your passport, you get your RM Williams. That's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but the Australian military also, like, uh, they were like standard issue, especially for parades for a long time. So the RM, the Comfort Craftsman, this boot is called, cool. is very versatile, famously comfortable. It's pretty expensive though, in the US especially, they're like $550-ish. Other good versatile options include Taylor Stitch's Ranch boot, which I think is like the most underrated Chelsea out there. Like no one really talked about this boot, but it's a really, really good option. And also Oliver Cabell's Chelsea. We actually both have a pair of these boots. It's, it's, yeah. it's rare for our, our shoes to intersect like that, but we, we're both yeah. big fans of the, uh, the crepe sold uh, Chelsea boot from Oliver Cabell as well. Yeah, I feel like the crepe sole is actually very, very comfortable. And if you do have a crepe sole Chelsea, it's a little harder to dress up for a casual boot. True. I really like the crepe sole. Yeah. So the next boot on our list is the Chucka boot. So the Chucka boot, uh, it's an ankle high boot. It looks good with a wide variety of outfits. And I feel like Chuckas are kind of like the sneakers of the boot world because you can wear them with almost anything. Some guys even wear them with shorts, although your mileage may vary with that kind of look. I wore some Chucka boots, like the, the Clark's Desert boot in a video a while back, and I got really roasted for it in the comment section. Uh, you can check out that video and see it happening. But a lot of people think they go really well with shorts. Um, another thing with Chuckas is that that they can get really, really casual, like the Clark's Desert boot, but you can also get more dressy chuckers, like the Crockett and Jones Tedbury. Uh, I've got some blue suede ones from Carmina. Um, and then there are, again, more casual chuckers, like the Clark's Desert boot. And speaking of desert boots, that's actually like a specific type of chucker with crepe soles and soft suede uppers. So they're a great choice for more casual outfits and warmer weather. Yeah, one sort of middle of the road chucka boot is the Scout from Thursday Boot Company. So you can dress this one up or down. This boot features stitch out construction, waxed cotton laces, and a cork bed midsole, and a studded rubber outsole. So style wise, the Scout isn't too casual or too dressy. You can definitely wear them with like chinos to a business casual office, but then you can also wear them with jeans on the weekend. And I really think if you add a chucka boot or a desert boot to your collection, you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this style. And lastly, the last boot on this list is the fun boot. <laughs> uh, so what do I mean by a fun boot? I mean, something different, something interesting. Like you've got fair pairs of boots at this point, man. Like why don't you experiment a little? This is something for date night, something for going to a bar, something that'll turn heads and get you compliments and just make you feel very cool. My most fun boot I think is the Parkhurst Spruce Kudu Allen boot. It's a bright green boot made with antelope leather. And I just think it looks really cool. It's just a really good combination of like eye-catching and understated. The leather is wild, but the boot itself is very minimalist and everyone compliments me on it when I wear it. Another really good fun boot, uh, practically anything from Taft's boots. Uh, this is their jack boot. It's like the archetypal fun boot. It's the perfect fun boot. I wear mine with a blue suit sometimes when I'm going to a wedding. It's not too crazy formal. Uh, I've also got their white wool boot, which I adore. Taft has boots in like every pattern from like flowers to woven leather and cashmere rugs. Get a fun boot. You might be reluctant to do so, but once you pull the trigger and wear it on your feet, you get compliments the first time you wear them and you'll instantly realize why cool boots can be such a confidence boot. Yeah, and also with, with the like fun boot or kind of any type of footwear that's a little bit flashier, it's cool because you can still keep your style, like your overall outfit pretty subdued. And then just your shoe, it's almost like an accessory. It kind of um, gives you a little bit of flair without like going overboard and wearing like a pink suit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the, that's the key I think to to making the fun boot work, depending on how like, uh, you know, outlandish your style is. Right. But, like with these green boots, people often ask me, how can you wear green boots? Like what do they go with? And the trick is you just have like very, uh, a fairly muted kind of boring look for the rest of your outfit, you know? So I'll just yeah. wear like a regular, like a, a black Henley and jeans and something like that. And then the green boots will work well with it. So that's my approach to wearing fun boots if you're feeling a bit stimmied by it. But um, yeah, get, get a fun boot, man. They're, they're good addition to your wardrobe, especially if you've already got four other kinds of boots. Totally. And that's it for our list. Originally, we had the suit boot or the dress boot as another category, but I figured that while boots can be great with a suit, it's not really the ideal shoe for a suit. Like I probably suggest getting four boots and then an Oxford or a Brogue rather than five boots with a dress boot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. If, if you want a six category, like a bonus six category for the video, the Carmina Chelsea is a boot that I have that I think you can wear with a suit. But it is true that Australians are more comfortable wearing Chelsea with suits than Americans are. If you want to lace up for a suit, I'd probably recommend a Balmoral boot. Uh, so mm. there are good options would be like Beckett Simonon's Elliot or some of the casting ones from Mirman. So uh, there you go. So a sixth more optional category if you'd like a dress boot. <laughs> 
So that's it for our list. Uh, be sure to check out Nick's channel for more boot reviews and just a ton of awesome menswear content over there. You can find a link to his channel and all the boots that you saw in this video down below in the description. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, stay stylish.